welcome to another video on my YouTube channel. In today's video, we are doing something, of course, Halloween-y because Halloween is coming up real soon and we are doing bats, but we are doing it in negative painting. So I recently took this class with Christina Sayonis in Domestica and it is an amazing class. Like her paintings are absolutely gorgeous. So I highly, highly recommend you take that class at Domestica. The link is down below in the description. You can get until October 26, you can get either $5 off or $10 off your purchase with my particular affiliate code. So go ahead and like check out that class and they have like a lot more classes. They have like, they have classes in English, in Spanish, Portuguese, I think Dutch, but all of them have subtitles in the description in, in like their videos. And again, Spanish, Portuguese, English, and Dutch. So you don't have to, what I really, really, really love about Domestica is like, you don't have to subscribe to like a year or three months or nothing. It's not a subscription based, it's a class based program. So I don't particularly have classes there, but I love all their classes. I've taken like three or four classes and they are amazing. So this one in particular is about negative painting with Christina. And she does flowers, she does like florals and stuff, but she goes through the entire process of how it works. Uh, she does like color, she obviously uses different colors and stuff, but I am using her techniques to paint this. Um, so in essence, what it really kind of is, is say you have your composition and so you have a whole bunch of little bats and you usually kind of paint the bat in itself or your element, the pumpkin or the flower or the whatever. And then you paint some kind of a background if you want to. But in negative painting, what you do is you paint everything outside of your actual element. So the idea is to create layers. And I think my little bats are pretty successful at this layering thing. So I will go through an overview of the materials in a minute, but basically we are using one brush, which is a Betty Hayways, and it has this super pointy uh, tip, which is perfect, absolutely perfect for like all the details, like in the, in like the head and like the wings, like it is absolutely amazing. I love this brush. You can find a link to these particular brushes down in the description below as well. And obviously we are only using one color. We're keeping it monochrome. I am not, you know, messing with color combinations and stuff like that. We are keeping it really, really simple. So I hope you guys enjoy the tutorial. So as per the usual, uh, we are going to be using our Arches watercolor paper that is 300 grams, 140 pounds. It is, um, it has some texture in it, so, but just a little bit, not, not too much, but that is what I typically use. Then we are using um, the Betty Hayways brush that um, has a very fine tip. It is synthetic, it is a vegan, you can find a link to them in the description below and our indigo we are only using one color one plate and you know i have to buy some more indigo but i use it in tube so that is what i am going to use just one color and this is the final painting so what we're trying to do to achieve with the composition of the bats maybe this might be too many but we need them to overlap sometimes. We need some bigger ones, some smaller ones, but some I like it when they kind of come out of the page. Uh, so it gives it more like um, a better composition. And so we're gonna try to imitate something like this. So what I like to do when I paint my bounce basically is really simple shapes, forms. So I find a middle, a middle line and then it's kind of like drawing a heart so you sort of like go like this like a curve and then from down here you draw like three curves that's kind of the system that i found so one two three very lightly and then this 
tip has to meet the other one and just that. And then because I draw better like this, so I, I tend to move the paper around and I kind of see where my line should be somewhere there just so it's kind of symmetrical. I try to make them as symmetrical as possible. This line somewhere here, this line somewhere here. So just kind of try to make them as symmetrical as possible. And this one just kind of like that. It's kind of too little, a little bit too much on the edge, but that's okay. And then down here, we like join them kind of like this. And that's it. That's it for the first shape. And then we're just going to duplicate them um, kind of very randomly. I want this to be a little bit more curved. Okay, so now we have our composition of our little bats and we are going to prep the paint, which is simply with the water, with the clean water, we're just going to basically wet, get our paint wet. We are going to do a low saturation, so a lot of water. So we're just going to do kind of a lot of water because that's going to be our first layer of paint so it's our lightest layer okay so with our paint ready we are just going to go ahead and paint the entire thing Great, so we are just going to let this dry as it is and it's going to buckle a little, like this one buckled a little, but it doesn't, it's not a big deal. So this is just how I do it. You might want to tape it or something different, but this is how I like to do it. I don't like to tape the edges because I want to keep uh, some of my bats at the edge kind of looking um, like they're coming off of the picture. So that's why I don't like to tape my edges. Okay, so now the paper is completely, completely dry. It buckled a little bit, but I don't really mind. And I see that I have a hard time seeing some of the lines. So I'm going to redo them a little bit just so I can see them. And we are going to apply a darker layer on the on most of the surface, except like some of the bats. Like I am going to choose uh, the ones that are most complete that I, that don't have overlapping or under, and like this one or this one, this one, and this one, and this one maybe. And then I'm going to cover the entire other uh, surface. So I am going to go over some of these lines a little bit because I'm having a hard time seeing them. So I'm just going to go over the, these a little bit. So 
So again, with my indigo, I put a little bit more paint and uh, I start painting. Okay, so now that we are done with the first layer, we are just gonna let it dry and flat, and then we're gonna move on to the next layer. Okay, so again, the paper is completely dry, and I can uh, choose a few of the, of the bats that I will paint next. I'm probably going to choose three, and the ones that I'm going to not paint over. So I will probably choose this one, so I'll highlight it a little bit more. So I can see it clearly. Then I am probably going to paint like not paint over this one because I really, I like the color that this one currently has. So I'm not going to paint over it. So I'm gonna highlight it as well, like with my pencil. So I can see clearly to not go over the lines of this one.
And then I am probably going to choose maybe this one down here to not go over with my paint. Okay, so I am going to start down here and it's just following the same lines. That we had before and then other lines basically Okay, so I know I have this one, this one, and this one. Something that's really amazing about this brush is that it holds a lot of water. So this is why, I, and it has a really thin tip so I can focus on the details. So that's why I like this brush so much. It just holds so much water, it's amazing. And this is our last section for this layer. And once we are done with the second layer, we're gonna let it completely dry and move on to our next layer. Okay, so this is our last layer. And the steps really do get repetitive. You just have to keep choosing an element and not paint over it as your last layer or your third layer or your fourth layer but you see how the elements start becoming like more vivid or more dark and your painting really starts taking shape after like a couple of layers. And it is, it is a little bit repetitive and that's why I have it uh, sped up, but you guys get the point and I really hope you enjoy making this little bat painting um, in negative.
All right, so we are done with the layers. I believe we did two, uh, three or four layers and it looks great. Like the layers of the painting, I think it just looks great and it, it gives it a lot of depth. All right, you guys, so I hope you really enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions, please let me know in the description below. If you have any questions about the materials or the technique in itself, uh, let me know in the comments. Um, if you learned anything from this video, if you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you are up to date in all my content that I upload once, maybe sometimes twice a week. So I'll see you guys next week. Bye.